Welcome in to another day of your daily Devo. My name is Pastor Rick. We're plowing our way through the book of Jude, and we are in verse 12. And Jude is talking to the people about false teachers that are coming in and trying to wreck people's lives by leading them astray. And because, quite honestly, they are just wicked, evil people that are motivated by by money, by power, by by wanting to do things their own way. We talked about that in the last devotional. We talked about Cain and Balaam and Korah and how not to be like them. Amen. Can I get an amen here, people? Can you like and subscribe and comment for me? That would be super cool. Uh, but jumping into verse 12, these people talking about these false teachers and kind of wolves in sleep and sheep's clothing, if you will, <clears throat> they're dangerous reefs at your love feasts as they eat with you without reverence. So a dangerous reef, obviously, would be something below the the surface of the water that you can't see that you plow your ship into and it just wreaks havoc on your ship and you end up sinking because you get a hole in your ship, you know, and you, you take on water and you sink and that's bad. Um, and so that's why it's dangerous because the reef can't be seen. And so that's kind of part of this whole false teacher uh, deception kind of thing is they're coming in undetected and <clears throat> they're they're hard to see. And yet the damage that they can do can be so significant to the ship of your faith, of your walk with the Lord, your relationship with him. They are shepherds who only look after themselves. They are waterless clouds carried along by winds, trees in late autumn, fruitless, twice dead, and uprooted. They're wild waves of the sea foaming up their shameful deeds, wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. Woo. So shepherds who only look after themselves, I mean, that's kind of self-explanatory. Um, that is like the antithesis of what a shepherd was supposed to be. A shepherd was supposed to be one that would lay down his life for the sheep, basically get in between the sheep and a wolf or a lion or a bear. If you think about David and what he did for the sheep that he cared for, killing a bear, killing a lion. And he said they're waterless clouds carried along by winds. And so they should be producing refreshing. They should be producing water for the crops to bring life everywhere they go. And yet there's no water. It's just dry, dry, dry. And it's causing the people that they're ministering, quote unquote, ministering to, to just dry up and die because they are false teachers trees and laid on them fruitless twice dead uprooted wild waves of the sea foaming up their shameful deeds wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever so some br pretty brutal uh, outcome planned for these false teachers it was about these that enoch in the seventh generation from adam prophesied look the lord comes with tens of thousands of his holy ones to, to, sorry about that. To execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly concerning all the ungodly acts they have done in an ungodly way. I mean, how ungodly can you get? You got ungodly people concerning all the ungodly acts that they did in an ungodly way. Whew. And concerning all the harsh things the ungodly sinners have said against him. So not only that, but then they were saying bad things. These people are discontented grumblers living according to their desires. Their mouths utter arrogant words, flattering people for their own advantage. So first you have discontented grumblers. I mean, we all know those people. You know, it doesn't matter how good things are going, how whatever is going on. They are discontented and they are grumbling. Sounds a little bit like Cora. You know, so don't be like Cora. We already talked about that. 
living according to their desires. Sounds a little bit like Cain doing thing his way, not wanting to do it according to the path God has laid out. Their mouths utter arrogant words. A little bit like Balaam. I mean, that might be stretching it a little, so I won't I won't go too far. Flattering people for their own advantage. I mean, that's certainly a Balaam kind of tactic, right? Because he was always getting paid and he could flatter people and all that kind of stuff because he was always being paid for what he was saying, what he was talking about. But you, dear friends, remember what was predicted by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They told you in the end time, there will be scoffers living according to their un to their own ungodly desires. These people create divisions and are worldly, not having the spirit. And so this whole idea of creating these divisions, especially when you're talking about, I mean, what Cain did, Cain did not care for his brother. His brother was actually succeeding over him and it was his brother succeeding over him that caused him to be filled with rage that would take him to do ungodly things. And then Balaam, I mean, living according to his own ungodly desires to, to get gain for him. And then he was going to speak words over these people that were going to create Divisions create destruction for the people of Israel. And then Korah, of course, is like the epitome of creating divisions, right? Like that's what he was all about. He was starting a rebellion, period, end of story, full stop. You know, like that's what Korah was up to. These people that are living according to their own ungodly desires are creating divisions. They are worldly and not having the spirit. So basically what we have going on in this section is a whole bunch of lessons to be learned from people that are doing it the exact opposite of the way we should be doing it. And there's certainly a place for that. There's certainly a place for us to learn lessons that we need to learn from seeing people that are doing it incorrectly and also to have our radar up to be sensitive to if we are in a church family and there are people coming in that are living according to their own ungodly desires that are creating divisions that are acting worldly, that are not flowing with the spirit. Those are situations where we need to be aware and we need to pray and we need to confront. So watch out for people that are discontented grumblers living according to their own desires, uttering arrogant words, and flattering people for their own advantage. And that's where it also can get really tricky is sometimes they just seem so nice. They just seem so nice because they're always saying the good thing that you want to hear about yourself. But all along, they're doing it for a purpose. They've got a manipulation going on. Flattering people. For their own advantage. All right, I think we're going to finish up <clears throat> the book of Jude tomorrow. So uh, dial in, same bat time, same bat station, and we will wrap it up tomorrow. God bless you today. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.